Well, hello again, YouTube. Uh, now, on this episode, I'm going to do a bit of an experiment. <laughs> Something I've been thinking about for a while. And um, it's to do with whether you can or cannot planish make weld. Now, on the previous, well, one of the previous videos, you saw me planishing the, the weld on the on the Escort. And you can see, I mentioned about how MIG weld's harder than TIG weld, so it's, it's not so easy to planish. So, I thought I'd... Uh, knock seven bells out of this and see what actually happens <clears throat> so I took a disc run a slit across this and welded all the way along with MIG I got this to glow red hot the blow lamp and let it cool naturally just to see if there would be a difference I left that bit as uh, as raw MIG weld and get this to, to, to glow up and leave it cool to see if I can anneal the weld but experiment I'm not really sure um, what was going to happen but stick around you'll see it's actually got interesting the results of this planishing MIG weld as it happens isn't as much of a nightmare as I always had presumed because I'd never really given it a good thrashing until it, it, it failed really so stick around and see what happens okay let's get a slitting disc into this and this is a bit I cut off of the other panel which was actually rubbish so it'll work for us so if I cut just simply cut along there and weld it up and then see what happens and we'll use our new silver line vice for this as well I'm putting the measurement on there for people because <laughs> if you're like me and you think you're ordering one this size and then it comes half the size there it is well, that's not a good start is it The end is fell out. Okay, let's see if we can get that on there a bit tighter. Let's get some grips on that. All right, okay. Maybe what I should have done, and I'll take the I'll take this on the chin as being my fault, is this. <laughs> okay. A silver liner watching, need to do something about this. The thread is wrong right there. So, what I will do uh, is I'll weld that on. Now it's not coming off. So, that's that done. So it's a quick, quick hack on that, so I'm not going to uh, dis, dis, discount it for something as silly as that. I'm trying to keep away from that end for a minute because it's still hot. <laughs> right, let's get a slitten disc down there. Let's get the new gloves on. Well, that's a nice feature, got a soft start on it. It does what it says on the tin, it cuts, it grinds. Happy days, it'll be interesting to see how long the battery lasts for. And uh, judge it accordingly. Right. What we'll do now is get to weld that up as if we would normally. And then see what we can do about... We'll have a go planishing it with it, with it as, a, as a hard weld. And so what I'll think about doing is perhaps to soften half of it. Or so I think I am. And then the rest of it. Now I know with putting heat on it with a blow lamp is going to cause more distortion. But if it does soften the metal, that does mean that that can be planished back out again. Yeah. Okay, because I'll almost certainly get asked what settings I'm putting it on. So the, the beauty of this welder is it's infinitely settable, which makes a big difference to the old ones with the uh, 
the switches one low one high and that sort of thing so what I tend to find with butt welding around here is about right I don't know what voltage settings that is on if aid puts a camera on that as I'm welding it'll tell you Right, now we have a second mask, we can arm aid with a mask. And the camera's wobbling, that's my happy face. Just <laughs> <laughs> come off and say something. buttons on the inside sensitivity low middle high let's go with middle delay time we'll go with fast because we don't want to melt our eyes Lovely. Right, what I think I'll do with this as well is order a, a, a new head torch and I'll do another video where I'll attach a head torch to this one. Be nice if you uh, could get some little LEDs and put them straight into there, wouldn't it? I'll have a think about that. I'm sure that can be done. Yes, there we go. Oh, and eight. You may play with that. Thanks. Oh, I probably should say at this point, <clears throat> explain what I'm doing, because this would be useful anyway. Okay, so when you're welding up with a gap like this, uh, don't aim directly for the gap. Aim for the, the spot you last deposited. Aim for that, aim for that, aim for that, aim for that. That way you get a nice little stack building up like those there, look. And then uh, you're not blowing holes all over the place. That is a very good tip, actually. That will prevent me from blowing holes all over the place. <laughs> good. I'm glad it's helped you out. <laughs> Since we've got an opportunity to try our little uh, disc of death, because we'd like to clean this up anyway, let's, let's use this. I think I've put my sleeves down as well. <laughs> Lovely, does a nice job of cleaning the uh, steel off. I was expecting that to be a bit more violent, but... Oh, nice. <clears throat> okay, so you'll have noticed when we was welding this, had the the gap from the cutting disc, which is about one mil. These, are, these the cutting discs are brilliant. I don't have a preference for any particular manufacturer, whichever one's an offer, to be honest, but it's the thin ones, which are the, the ones you want. That's still warm. <clears throat> but what you do get with a hole with a gap in it is good penetration. Look at that. Now then, you'll see from that angle the shape that's gone there. Look with the distortion from welding. You can see it from there. Look, it's sort of gone doink. Because yeah. <clears throat> what happens is initially it, it expands with the heat. But it can only expand so far and then it sort of bunches up and as it cools down then it cools down further then it expands so you get shrinkage 
So what's happened there is that is shrunk and pulled up. And that's the idea of hammering it against something flat is that you can then stretch that back out again. <coughs> and well, I've gone too far with that now, but uh, you can see that stretches that back out again. So that's, now that is stretched back into there and pushed up on there. But you get the get the idea. But if we carry on with that, eventually they those, I bet they won't do it now, will go brittle and split. So what I want to try and do is get a blow lamp on that lot there until they glow cherry red and leave them cool down naturally and see how they hammer compared to those. You can see that as it's expanding, how it's bulging up now. But as that cools down, that will shrink back. Well, now we wait. Now we wait. For you, it'll be about two seconds. Right, okay, so this is now stone cold. And you can see the, the heat is transferred all over the place and that is quite horribly distorted I might try it. what I might do actually is get the disc on there and polish it all up so you can you probably should see the distortion better in it if it's all shiny so let's do that first Right, so what I'm going to do now is use a feature on the vise. And swing it around. Do it a bit better. You can see you. <laughs> I've dented it already. Right, well that would be a, a sign of um, how much, how hard this still is or isn't. This is how much it damages that as you hammer through it. So let's give that a whirl. Well, yeah, one thing I don't like about this vice is my other one's got a, a grip a handle on there you can grab it and pull it out quickly this one you just got to wind it out it's a, a downside to it but other than that it seems pretty good it's got nice wide jaws in it okay let's see if we can Get that so you can see that bump in it there. The idea now is to see if we can flatten that by hammering that out. That should bring that bump down. Right, I think what I need to do next is get a flat bead on these, grind these off and then work from there. It does feel softer as I'm hammering it. <laughs> I went to go like that then and close the vice. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, let's try the, the flat wheel that came in one of the packets. Uh, oh, 40 grip. 40. Yeah. Let's give that a whirl. Usually, I, I'm not a huge fan of flap wheels. I find they heat things up too much. It'd be interesting to see how this one goes. Give me the fenders on. Yeah, yeah, please. So, 
question then. You said you're not into flat wheels so much uh, because it heats things up. Now, obviously the project I've got is not car based, but what would you use instead? Uh, grinding stone normally. Okay. So, something along this sort of line. I'd usually just knock the tops off with something like this. Then perhaps use a flat wheel or something softer just to make it nicer. But just, just to tart it up at the end rather than use that as the main yes. boy. Right, okay. Yeah, because these make these don't put so much heat in. And what I tend to do with these is use them like that rather than sort of flat like that. So actually just using the end of it and just leaving the, the grinder run its under its own steam. Oh interesting. But we're gonna see how this one goes, so let's crack. Okay. Let's use that. Actually, that has highlighted that this is working. Oh, this, that is quite hot though. Yeah, I can't, I can't leave my hand on that. But you see the difference with how that's ground there? That's just taking the, the grinder across there. You can see how that is sunk in there. But when I've planished this, it's, it's flatter again. The straight edge to show that. Yeah, you can see it. <clears throat> so I see there the weld is sunk in so where it's shrunk it's tucked down but where i've planished it out it's flattened back out if anything i've gone a bit too far with it it has made planishing it work hmm interesting okay let's <clears throat> have another all right let's Back in there. And I'm only How long till you put a motor on that? <laughs> <laughs> right, before I uh, go any further, I haven't ground the inside off because generally you can't get a grinder to the inside of where you're working. So you cannot quite often get a dolly up in beside, but not so much a grinder. So I'm working on that premise that this would stay like that and the surface would would go like this. So we'll see if we can get these. Here's a file. Uh, I don't profess to be very good at this. I'm just bodging at this and having a go to see what it looks like. So there's my high spots. So let's see if I can get those down. What do I need to do? Is it if I have a different dolly? So even that. Yeah, that's a lot flatter than it was. Right, okay, so what we'll do, we'll have a little play with this bit here. You see how the weld is high. And you've got the flat spot, it dips in. So we'll have a go at just tonking this down and see, how, see what happens. What isn't happening, which is really what I wanted to try this for, is nothing is splitting. So what I think I'm going to continue doing here now, continue whacking it with a hammer until something splits. So okay, so that's our un untreated weld, and that's our treated weld. So I'm going to just go backwards and forwards on them, 
and see uh, see what happens. Well, now they're splitting. <clears throat> Maybe it well can be planished out more than we think it can. It's not splitting. <clears throat> I'd expect that to have split by now. But that is definitely soft for there. You can see that one is peening over quite nicely. Yeah, that is flattening out quite nicely. In fact, there's so much oh, it's, it's, I'm stretching it now, too much of it. That's, so if you see what's happening now, because that's all oh, stretching out, which, <coughs> which is what you want it to do. Because I've overdone it here, just to, just because I'm having a bit of an experiment. Oh, that's interesting. What I have learned from this is, oh, you can just see a crack form in there, look. I think that's a crack there. This is just the end of the edge of the hammer blow, hang on. Let's work at it a bit more. Nope, it's not a crack, it's just the, the edge of the crown of the hammer, I caught it on the side. Okay, so the greatest thing I've learned from this is not so much worrying about whether you can soften the metal back up again, but the MIG was actually soft enough to, to bash with the hammer anyway. Because that is not cracking. Right, let's give it, let's have it. play with it in the vice. I'm sure there's going to be guys out there who do this for a living. I think I'm an absolute wally by what I'm doing here. And I accept that. I don't, I'm not an expert at this by any chance. I'm just having a little play, see what happens. And I know everybody says that TIG welding is better because you can planish it out because it's softer. And I don't disagree with that. No doubt that is true. I've never done any TIG welding. But what I ha am learning from this is that MIG welding doesn't appear to be quite the terrible thing that everybody seems to think it is. This what happens if we do this. We can see it's definitely harder than the metal around it because it won't bend on it so easily. Ah yeah, and that's definitely softer now, look, because that is bending easier in the vice. It's bending on the weld without cracking, but I'm sure. Let's try bending it on the weld over there. The bit I didn't treat. Oh yeah, that. Okay, that is definitely harder. Oh, you can see actually the difference there where the heat stopped. In fact, I've got even got a crack starting there where the heat stopped. <coughs> so attacking it with the blow lamp has softened it, but. I think it's already soft enough to be able to planish enough to work with, even though it's still harder than the surrounding metal. It's not cracking and falling to bits like I expected it would do. Oh, there it is now because I'm doing that to it. See how it's cracked there now compared to the metal around it. Let's do that over there, see how that, that holds up.
yeah that split there as well but it did take longer to split than that one did so it has softened it but I don't think it's a process a process which is necessary because I think that weld even though it's still harder is still soft enough to planish and I think that's mostly down in the, in the past you see me cooling welds off with the with the um uh, the, egg, uh, the air gun, air compressor. Yes. Yep. That's the word, air gun. <laughs> uh, but I've since learned that's actually doing more damage because if you cool it down too fast, it contracts faster and causes more damage. So you're better off leaving it cool down naturally than you are leaving it and cooling it quickly. So tack, leave it cool, tack, leave it cool, and you end up with a MIG weld, which you can poon with a hammer. And, only, and that's only cracked because I forced it on a crack there. So, I think is a good, uh, lesson to be learned from that is when we're MIG welding two butt panels together, is to spot them in place gently, go slowly, let them cool down naturally, and then they'll still be soft enough. Even though they're harder than TIG weld, they're still soft enough to be able to planish them down to get the uh, get the distortion out of them. So I hope that proved useful to me. I uh, to <laughs> I'll try that again. I hope that proved useful to you. It certainly has proved useful to me. Just have a little play with it. Um, I hope the yeah, showing how to uh, weld up a butt joint has also been a useful part of that as well. Showing how to uh, get tacks together. Yeah, thanks for watching. Brilliant.